Okay, welcome to our third and final lecture on chapter two. Okay, we talked a lot about uh, Bronsted Lowry acids. Okay, we'll talk a little bit uh, a little bit about Lewis acids. Okay, so section two point seven aspirin is very interesting. Again, some of these um, practical application sections we'll skip so that we have a kind of a uh, what do you call it, stay on task with our themes, our thematic um, approach, but 2.7 is quite interesting. And uh, 2.8 is Lewis acid. So we talked about Arrhenius definition is H plus and OH minus. The Bronsted-Lowry definition is a proton donor or a proton acceptor. Now the Lewis definition, this is just a more general definition. Lewis acid, this is GN Lewis. He also won a Nobel Prize. Uh, Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. This is more general because we'll see. Every you know, it's not just protons. It's from the perspective of the electron pair. So Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. Lewis base is an electron pair donor. I will say that if there were two sets of definitions that you really need to know would be Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis. Just memorize them. Bronsted, Lowry is a proton acceptor. Uh, Bronsted, Lowry acid is a proton acceptor. Bronsted, Lowry base is a proton donor. Uh, sorry. Uh, I said that back because I just looked at these. Okay, so scratch what I just said. Sorry, restart, reset the lecture. Okay, I'm just sitting here staring at these. Let's just go ahead and write it down. Bronsted, Lowry acid equals what? A proton what? What's an acid do? It's a donor. Okay. Bronsted Lowry base equals an H plus acceptor. Okay. So don't try to remember that acid is an acceptor, right? Because it depends on the definition. The Bronsted Lowry acid is kind of a traditional definition of acid. It's a proton donor. Bronsted Lowry base is a proton acceptor. Now the Lewis definition is from the perspective of the electron pair. It's just the opposite, okay? But it's just a but it become a broader definition because you can have Lewis acids that are not um, Bronsted acids, okay? But all Bronsted acids are Lewis acids, okay? Because by definition they're accepting electron pairs. Okay, nothing's moving from atom to atom, but you know we'll see this when we push arrows. Lewis acid electron pair acceptor. Lewis base electron pair donor. Okay, what do we mean by that? Let's look at some molecules. It's all perspective. Depends on what is happening before we start calling some anything a name. Okay. Let's see this molecule much later. We haven't looked at this one yet, but it's a good example. Let's look at these five molecules here. We'll look at some more in a second, but what are we missing? Missing lone pairs. Okay. So we said water can be an acid or a base. Okay. It could be a Bronsted acid if something is coming in and picking up the proton. Okay. It could be a Bronsted base if this is going out and picking up a proton. Now, it can also be a Lewis base if this is attacking something that is not a hydrogen. can't really be a Lewis acid. I mean, it is a Lewis acid and a Bronsted. Bronsted, Lowry, and Lewis. Okay? Um, but it, if, it, if it's functioning as a, an acid, it's functioning as both. Okay? We'll see when we get down here at boron and aluminum that it's, they're no longer Bronsted, Lowry acids. Okay? So uh, methanol can do the same thing. That can attack something and attack the H, etc. All right? Now, this is the most acidic proton, the H. Okay, we talked about this. This is a resonance effect. So that would be behaving as a Bronsted Lowry um, acid. In principle, this can attack something, something more acidic than itself, like H2SO4. It could get protonated. Okay, so carbonyls, these are called carbonyls, carbon oxygen double bonds. The oxygen can attack something and get protonated. So then it's acting as a either a Bronsted base or a Lewis base, depending on what it's interacting with, okay? 
So some more examples. They can also interact with boron, then it's acting as a Lewis base only. So let's look at boron. We established that boron in its neutral form is sp2 hybridized and has an empty p orbital. sp2, that's a p orbital. Above and below, two orbital, or two lobes. Okay, one orbital, two lobes. So sp2 hybridized boron. This is very electron deficient. Things with electrons, something like a base, wants to come in here and interact with boron. If it does that, it's a Lewis base, LB. That Lewis base is interacting with a Lewis acid. Now the Bronsted definition doesn't work. Okay, this is only this only works for the Lewis definition. BH3 or aluminum trichloride, same idea. These are oops, sorry, these are Lewis acids only. Okay. So again, I want you to understand reactivity rather than you know being able to assign hypotheticals. Now we're talking about hypotheticals. We're going to see real reactions. Okay. So Lewis acid only because it's boron. Okay. We'll see another one, carbocation. Let's see this carbocation, but just to make it similar. Carbocation can have things attack it, and it's also acting as a Lewis acid. It's also acting as an electrophile. A nucleophile will attack that. Okay, just to introduce that terminology. Okay, so let's draw a few more. OH minus. It's called a ketone. The functional groups in chapter three. And we can have a double bond. So this can react with something. It could react with a proton. It'd be a Bronsted base. It could react with boron, then it's a Lewis base. Same thing here. This can react with something. It can react with a proton, so it's a Bronsted base, the ketone. Like this, this pair electron would be functioning as a Bronsted base. If it reacts with boron, for example, it would be functioning as a Lewis base. It all depends on what it's reacting with. Same idea. This pair of electrons, even though it's not a lone pair, it's a pair of pi electrons that can react with something. Say a proton, it's functioning as a Bronsted base. Okay? So it all depends on what things are interacting with. It depends on the nature of the acid. So let's look at a few specific cases. Lewis acids interact with Lewis bases and vice versa. It's a reaction. Lewis base, I'll put in quotes, donates the electron pair to Lewis acid. Now, again, the pair of electrons is not hopping off of the base to the acid. Okay, It's interacting. It's forming a bond. Okay. Again, terminology for our for our terms, Lewis acid and electrophile are fairly synonymous. Lewis acid is comparable to electrophile. Okay. There's some specificity here that is not that important. Electrophile, we'll use electrophile a lot with carbon. Okay. And we'll use nucleophile to mean non-hydrogens. Okay, so Lewis base is similar to a nucleophile, okay, we, we really use electrophile and nucleophile when we're talking about carbon mostly, okay? So, two different types of Lewis acid, Lewis base interactions. We call them type one, where one bond form, okay? Type one, again, I'm not going to ask you to list these types, but there's two types. You can form one bond. How does that work? Let's look at BH3 again. You could have BF3 or BCL3. It's the same concept. You've got an sp2 hybridized atom with an empty p orbital. What does boron not have? It does not have a filled octet. So we want to fill it. Some oxygen with a lone pair. It could be a carbon oxygen double bond, or it could be methanol or water, as we're showing here. This pair of electrons is going to reach out and form a bond. That's what we're saying here. This pair of electrons is not hopping off of oxygen and going to boron. That would be called electron transfer. That's not what's happening. Right now, it's a Lewis base interacting with a Lewis acid. That oxygen is reaching out, forming an oxygen-boron bond. We're going to draw the products of that interaction. Boron, let's draw it as its tetrahedral sp3 hybridized self. Do the same for oxygen. We don't need to do that for oxygen. 
Oxygen is also sp3 though. And now we got some charges, okay? So go back, calculate these charges, owned electrons, valence number, all that business. Start memorizing. Neutral oxygen, two lone pairs, and two bonds. Neutral. Oxygen with two, uh, three groups around it and one lone pair, it's got a positive formal charge. Boron that has three bonds is neutral in terms of charge. Boron with four bonds is tetrahedral now, and it's got a negative charge. So you'd be able to get those down. Okay. So all we did was form one bond, type one. Look at a type two. Okay. Type two is two bonds. Type one is one bond, and it's formed. Okay. In fact, you could break it. It's still a Lewis acid Lewis base interaction. The reaction we just showed that bond can break and go backwards. Okay. But it's one bond that's doing something. Now we have two bonds. Type 2 is two bonds. One's going to form and one's going to break. Let's leave off the carbons. They're implied. We're going to look at ethylene interacting with HCl. Okay. Just like water can attack HCl and dissociate, so can ethylene. It just doesn't have a lone pair, it has a pair of pi electrons. These electrons can attack a hydrogen, push out the chloride. Remember, you cannot have two bonds to hydrogen. So what happens here? You get dissociation in a way, but you're left with a carbocation. This is extremely important. Be extremely important in chapter uh, seven and beyond. We'll look at a lot of carbocation chemistry. What do we do? We formed one bond, a carbon, right? This pair of electrons on this carbon here reached out and formed a carbon-hydrogen bond. Let's circle the H. There's the new bond. Where'd these electrons come from that are right here? They came from this bond. The pi bond became a sigma bond. What's left over is that you only have three one, two, three atoms bound, so you have a plus charge. You have a p orbital there with a plus charge, much like boron. Carbocations are isoelectronic with neutral boron, BH3. Okay, this bond was broken. This is the broken bond here. The HCl bond was broken. Where did those electrons go? They went to Cl. This is a very stable anion. Okay. Now, this is electron deficient and reactive, and what we're going to see is the chloride is going to come back in here and form a bond, but we'll get to that next. Okay, That's the next Lewis acid-Lewis base interaction. It's a type 1. Okay, So let's redraw it. We've got our carbocation. I'm going to put the H's and wedges and dashes. Put in my P orbital. Put in my CH3 there. And what we say we generated Cl minus. Now, Cl minus is a very weak Bronsted base, but this is very electron deficient. Okay? I'm introducing you to some things in Chapter 7 already, Okay, because I want you to think about them. Electron deficient. Now, at type 1, that Cl minus can come in and attack that carbon at the p orbital. And what forms? You form a chlorine carbon bond. Okay. One bond form, Cl carbon. Okay. Much like what we just showed, oxygen attacking boron. Not so different. Okay. Lots of other examples. Another type 1 example. I want you to understand boron. Leaving off the p orbital, what do we get? We get an oxygen boron bond. Put wedges and dashes again if you want. Minus plus CH3. Okay. One new bond, oxygen boron bond. These are all Lewis base attacking Lewis acids. Let's look at one more type two. They'll be important again later on. 
look at ethylene again. Reacting with H3O plus. So now H3O plus again, if, if you put HCl in water, you get dissociation, right? If you put H, H2SO4, sulfuric acid in water, you get dissociation. And you'll get, instead of Cl minus, you'll get this resonance stabilized sulfonate, we call it. So now, two bonds. Okay, this is still a Lewis base attacking the Lewis acid, but now it's a Bronsted acid. So what do we have? We have a, a base attacking the acid, pushing the electrons, and we get a reaction, and we get a carbocation. Still get protonation. And we'll see that what happens next is not that the sulfonate can come in. Oh worry too much about all this because it's not till much later chapters. In this case, we have a whole bunch of water in there. So the water is going to come in there. Okay, so water can attack carbocations. We'll see all this later. Okay, right now I want you to understand fundamentally there's Bronsted Lowry acids and bases, there's Lewis acids and bases. Lewis acids are electron pair acceptors. Lewis bases are electron pair donors. We've already, we have now introduced a lot of reactivity that we'll be covering over the next, over the semester. Okay, so if you're a little overwhelmed or a lot overwhelmed now, that's okay. The point is to get you thinking about this stuff so that you're, uh, it's not the first time you've seen it when we hit the chapter seven or whatever. Okay. So that's acid and base chemistry, and we will um, pick it up next time with um, chapter three, and um, that's that.